Welcome back to the deep dive. This time we're heading back to ancient Greece. Get ready to explore Aristarchus of Samos. Talk about a guy with some seriously ahead of their time ideas about the universe. It's crazy, right? This is someone born around 310 BC. His ideas, I mean, they were late years ahead. It's like he was already living in the future. Back then, most people thought the Earth was the be-all and end-all, the center of everything. And this guy's out here saying, nope, it's the sun we're spinning around. Talk about a tough sell. Okay. And the most amazing part, no fancy telescopes, no high-powered computers, just pure brain power and observation. Okay, so before we get too far into Aristarchus' theories, let's talk about the man himself. What do we actually know about his life? Well, that's the thing. Not much. History was a little stingy with the details when it comes to Aristarchus. A true enigma, huh? Exactly. But here's the thing. We do know this. Aristarchus ended up in Alexandria and Alexandria back then. It was the place to be. The intellectual hub, a melting pot of ideas, libraries, scholars everywhere. Like today's Silicon Valley, but for, you know, philosophy and astronomy. Got it. So instead of startups, it was like startup ideas about the universe. You got it. And here's the kicker. Aristarchus. He wasn't some outsider with wild theories. He studied with Strato of Lampsacus. Okay, and for those of us who aren't ancient Greek scholars. Right. Strato. He was the head honcho at Aristotle's school. Talk about an academic rock star. Okay, so Aristarchus was in the inner circle of thinkers, debating with the best of the best. Exactly. He was at the center of it all, but he wasn't afraid to shake things up. Which leads us to his most famous idea, the heliocentric model. Most of our listeners probably know this one, but just in case, can you give us a quick rundown? Sure. So back then, the going theory was geocentric, meaning Earth was the center of everything and the sun, moon, stars, they all revolved around us. Makes sense, kind of. I mean, it feels like we're standing still. Right. But Aristarchus, he comes along and flips the script. He says, hold on, guys. What if it's the sun at the center and the Earth? We're just spinning around it, along with all those other planets. Wow. How did he come up with that? I mean... Was it just a lucky guess? Not at all. He was a sharp guy, a real observer of the night sky, and a math whiz. He didn't have telescopes and all that, but he knew how to use his eyes, his brain, and good old-fashioned geometry. Working out the universe's secrets with just his mind. Exactly. And he wasn't starting from scratch either. Remember Philolysis? A couple of centuries before Aristarchus, he had already floated the idea of a central fire at the heart of everything. So Aristarchus took that and ran with it. He saw the bigger picture, he put the sun in the center, and then to explain the whole day and night thing, he added that the earth rotates on its axis too. Whoa. And if that wasn't enough, he also said that all those stars up there, they're actually distant suns just like our own. Right. Imagine looking up at night and seeing those pinpricks of light, not just as stars, but as other suns, maybe with planets of their own. Mind-blowing stuff. It's incredible though, right? Trying to imagine what it would have been like back then, trying to convince people that everything they thought they knew about the universe was wrong. So if Aristarchus was right, why did it take almost 2,000 years for everyone else to catch up? Did people just think he was nuts? Well, let's be real. It was a pretty radical idea for the time. It challenged pretty much everything people thought they knew about, well, existence. Not exactly an easy sell. Yeah, I can imagine trying to explain that one at a dinner party. So how did people react? Did he get laughed out of the symposium or? You know, there's this idea that Aristarchus was persecuted for his beliefs, people tossed in jail, that sort of thing. But the truth is, there's no real evidence of that happening. So no angry mobs of philosophers with torches and pitchforks. Not quite. Seems like his ideas were more, you know, just kind of ignored. Remember, this was ancient Greece. Debating ideas was encouraged. It was practically the national sport, challenging established theories. That was just part of the game. Okay, so more of a, huh, interesting, and less of a off with his head. Exactly. Though some people definitely weren't thrilled, mind you. We know a Stoic philosopher, Cleanthes, he wasn't a fan. Hard to say if he disagreed on the science itself or if it was more a philosophical difference, though. Interesting. But even if not everyone was on board, his work didn't just disappear. Not at all. It's out there. We know some seriously big names knew about his theories. Archimedes, the math genius. Okay, yeah, the Archimedes. Inventor, engineer. That's the one. He actually mentions Aristarchus's heliocentric model in his own writing. So even if people weren't ready to completely rewrite the astronomy textbooks, Aristarchus' ideas were still making the rounds in those elite academic circles. Exactly. And it wasn't just talk. Centuries later, a Hellenistic astronomer, Seleucus of Seleucia, he actually picked up that heliocentric torch and ran with it. 
became a real advocate for the idea. Wow, Aristarchus had a fan club. That's kind of amazing. Right. It's a shame so much of Seleucus's writing is lost. We don't know the full extent of his theories. But the fact that he was championing this sun-centered universe definitely tells us something about how far Aristarchus's impact reached. Planting those seeds of scientific revolution. So, big jump ahead here, but what about those Renaissance guys? Copernicus, Kepler, Galileo, the whole gang. Did they know about Aristarchus? It's hard to say for sure if they were like directly reading his work. But the thing is, those ideas, they had a way of sticking around. It's possible that over the centuries, Aristarchus's ideas got passed down, maybe in bits and pieces. Copernicus especially, he knew his ancient Greek astronomy. He might have come across Aristarchus's theories somewhere along the way. So even if he wasn't around to see it, Aristarchus kind of laid the groundwork for one of the biggest shifts in scientific thought ever. Exactly. Though even if he hadn't, you know, become the father of heliocentrism or whatever, Aristarchus would still be a rock star in the history of science. Because this guy, he also had a hand in figuring out the sheer scale of the universe, or at least how big the sun and moon are compared to us down here. Okay, yeah, those are some big questions, <laughs> literally. But how do you even begin to measure that kind of thing without, you know, modern tech? Well, you use what you've got. And what Aristarchus had, a brilliant mind for math, and a real knack for observation. This guy, he was all about using geometry to unlock the universe's secrets. Cosmic geometry, I like All right. So check this out. He actually figured out a way to estimate the sizes of the Earth, Moon, and Sun all by watching a lunar eclipse. Hold on. A lunar eclipse? When the Earth's shadow falls on the Moon, how do you even... How does that work? This is where Aristarchus's genius really shines through. He noticed that during an eclipse, the Earth, Moon, and Sun, they're all lined up perfectly. And just by watching how the Earth's shadow moved across the Moon, he could actually calculate the relative sizes of everything. I'm trying to picture it. The Earth's shadow, like, creeping across the Moon. Okay, but how accurate could he have been? I mean, no disrespect to the ancients, but... And you'd be surprised. He estimated that the Moon's diameter is about one-third of Earth's. And guess what? He was super close. No way. Not bad, Aristarchus. What about the sun, though? He tackled that, too. He used a similar kind of method, only this time he focused on the angles and distances between the Earth, Moon, and Sun during a half moon. And get this, he figured out that the sun, way, way bigger than the Earth, way bigger than anyone back then imagined. Okay, that must have been a real whoa moment for him. So how close did he get? He estimated the sun was something like like seven times wider than Earth? Seven. I thought it was more than that. Well, yeah, today we know it's actually more like 109 times wider. Oh. But still, seven times bigger. Back then, when everyone thought we were the biggest, most important thing in the universe, that's huge. Totally. So even if his numbers weren't perfect, just the fact that he even tried to wrap his head around those distances back then, that's incredible. It really is. He was trying to measure the universe with, like, a ruler and a string. And a whole lot of brain power. Mm -hmm. So we've got the heliocentric model. We've got these mind-blowing size comparisons. Anything else this guy figured out, don't leave me hanging. Mm -hmm. It's like he was playing cosmic detective. Okay. Piecing together these huge clues about the universe, but with, like, the most basic tools. Exactly. And this is where it gets really cool. So he's figured out the sun, it's not just bigger than the earth, it's way bigger. And that gets him thinking. Because if you've got this enormous object, this giant sun, wouldn't it make more sense if the smaller thing, the earth, was the one doing the orbiting? Yeah, okay, that tracks. It's like you wouldn't expect a bowling ball to orbit a marble, right? right. And that, my friend, that's basically the seed of the heliocentric model. But he didn't stop there. He even tried to figure out the distances between everything, estimated that the sun was something like like 18 to 20 times farther away from us than the moon. Wait, only 18 to 20? I thought it was way more than that. It is. Today, we know it's actually more like 400 times. But the fact that he even tried to measure those distances back then, using what shadows and angles, it's incredible. Yeah, that's trying to measure the entire solar system with a yardstick. Huh. So even if his calculations were a little off, just the thought process, the attempt, that's what blows my mind. Absolutely. Aristarchus, he was willing to challenge what everyone thought they knew. And his ideas about the size, the scale, the whole structure of the universe, totally revolutionary. And even if he didn't live to see everyone else catch up, his work, it laid the foundation for centuries of astronomical discovery. Through a pioneer. You know, it makes you think we look up at the same night sky today, but these guys, they were coming up with these incredible theories without 
all the tech we take for granted. Right. Imagine giving Air Circus a Hubble telescope. What would he have figured out? It's humbling in a way. We've come so far, but it all goes back to these brilliant minds asking those big questions. Totally. It reminds you that every scientific discovery, even the really mind-blowing ones, they're built on the work of everyone who came before. Couldn't have said it better myself. And on that note, I think we've done our due diligence on Aristarchus of Samos, a true visionary. A cosmic trailblazer. So next time you're gazing at the stars, maybe spear a thought for Aristarchus, the guy who put the sun in its rightful place. Thanks for joining us for another deep dive.